So uh, real quick, I got a few, uh, few things I want to tell you before we, we get into here. Uh, number one, if you're a fella in here, a dude um, that is planning on going to the Stronger Men's Conference with us, uh, that money, the 115 of the 275 is due today. And, um, or if you got to give it to me sometime this week, sometime this week is fine. Uh, but I need to go ahead and buy those conference tickets because we don't want it to sell out and not get a chance to go. So I need to go ahead and secure the purchase on all the conference tickets. So if you can get that in today, you can use a tie them all open, just hit uh, stronger, or you can use, uh, ask me, text me. I've sent most of the fellows a link, uh, to the registration link so you can register and all of that cool stuff. But, uh, but that's the Stronger Men's Conference that's coming up. I'm super pumped up for that. Uh, other thing is the Hope app. Man, last, last week we shared some vision, something we believe the Lord spoke into uh, my life is that, and for us as a church family to start speaking and praying into existence, that within the next three years we'll have a place that we call home, and a thousand people will be a part of it. I really believe that's going to come to true. I'm confident in it. And we launched the Hope app with that and uh, to to really get the generosity there. Uh, if you had set up Hope app, or you tried to set up the Hope app, and you're having issues on the Roundup giving, you are not the only one having issues. There is a, a system issue right now, and the development team is working on it. We've submitted the ticket. So if you've tried to set up Roundup giving, you're like, it's not working for me. I must not be able to figure it out. Trust me, it's not you. It's us. And we're trying to figure, you know, it's like, it's not you. It's me. <laughs> and, um, we're going to figure it out and get it all done for you. Also, um, I don't know who's re- who thinks they're going to win the all-in contest for coming each week in February, but we're going to be pulling on Tuesday, and somebody is going to be walking away with $500. So uh, if you, you are an all-in contest, in the all-in contest, you're like, who does that? We just wanted you to come to church in February, and you did. So that's awesome. So you're going to get a chance for that. So with that said, uh, another reason I'm excited today is Pastor Burt. And, uh, and Pastor Tyler have been just a blessing to our church in the first month they've been there. Wouldn't you say that, church? I mean, they have been a blessing. It was wild to me that they made the decision to come here based on us not being able to pay them or really provide anything other than just faith. Hey, we got a cool vision, you know. Um, and they did. They came down in faith, and they've kind of been getting settled down, and I was ready. I was like, man, pa- Bro, you, it's time for you to come and preach and share a word with our church family, and, uh, and he's going to be preaching on faith. But I just want you guys to know, y'all have been a blessing to our church already. Like, the first month has been amazing, and like, the future to come. Uh, I told, I've been telling a few people on uh, Sundays and any day that we're together, me and Leah, we don't have one kid now, we have four. And so, uh, <laughs> so it's, it's awesome with their three kids, and everything's been great. But why don't you guys give Pastor Bert a big Church on a Mission welcome as he comes to deliver his first message. Hold on, don't leave yet, don't leave yet. Where's Pastor Leah at? She's not in here, she's in the back. Well, she's back there, so you can hear me. You can hear me. <laughs> but, um, man, we have great pastors, don't we? Don't we? Um, and um, I just want to personally thank you. Thank you and Pastor Leah for all that you guys have done. Um, you guys have inspired us in so many ways. The fact that you, took, that you went out on faith and built this church and look at how much it has grown over the last years. It's inspiring to us. And um, that made our faith, our faith jump either easier because we know that we're going and we're following people who are full of faith as well. So um, we thank you. We love you. And, uh, hey, it's just the beginning. It's, it's just the beginning. So love you guys. Um, love you, sis, in the back. Um, and then also I want to I wanna thank – hold on. Let me make sure to turn this around the right way. You ever try to open up your laptop from the wrong side? I have, but anyway, (laughs) Um, I want to thank the church. Thank you guys, um, because um, that love offering that you gave us, it helped us a lot. Not going to lie, we didn't come down with much, and what you guys gave, it really blessed our family in more ways than you think, than you could ever imagine. So I thank you so much for that, Um, and yeah, I'm excited for the years to come, y'all. I hope y'all are too, because God is just getting started in this place. Come on. All right, so um, let's, let's get into it. Like Pastor Ryan was saying, I'm going to be talking about faith today. And we are going to be talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Are y'all familiar with them at all? Kind of, kind of. Well, if you ain't, you're about to get familiar now. So um, we're going to be coming in Daniel chapter 3. 
If you got your Bibles, turn to Daniel chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 16. But before we get started, I'm going to give a little backstory to uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they were three Hebrew boys from Jerusalem. Jerusalem was conquered by Babylon, whose king was Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar then took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and trained them in all the Babylonian traditions. They eventually became wise men. And fast forward some years, King Nebuchadnezzar built a golden statue of himself. Pretty narcissistic guy. He's a narcissistic king. He loves himself. He loves Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar then uh, put a decree out on all of Babylon saying, whenever you hear the horns and the trumpets and the drums and all this, you are to bow down and worship the gold statue that he built. The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I'm going to refer to them as the three Hebrew boys because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, trying to say that, try, try saying that three times real fast. It's hard. It's, I get tongue-tied sometimes. Um, but they, being Christians, did not bow to the statue because they, the only, only king that they're going to bow to is Jesus Christ. Well, not Jesus at the time, but to God. And um, King Nebuchadnezzar didn't like that. He didn't like that. And he said that if you don't bow, we're going to toss you into the furnace and we are going to burn you. And now we're going to pick up at Daniel chapter 3, verse 16. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are, to, or if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hands. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. This brings me to my first point. What does it take to break you? What does it take to break you? What does it take to break your faith, break your trust, break your hope? What are the things that it takes to break you? I know um, some, uh, some things may be big. Some things may be really small. Like, for instance, how many of us can't do anything? I mean, anything at all without that cup of coffee in the morning. Mm, I, know, I know we got some coffee drinkers in here. I mean, like you, like you wake up in the morning, you can't find the light switch, don't know what, what clothes you're going to wear, like you walking around like a zombie, can't speak without that cup of coffee in the morning. My wife is kind of like that, but she, she, needs, she needs that coffee in the morning. Or, or how about this? How many parents we got in the house? How many parents we got? Your kids can sometimes break you. Amen. Can I get an amen on that? Your kids, between the mamas and the daddies and the, and the uh, crying and the fussing, that stuff can sometimes get very annoying. And all my parents said, amen, amen to that. But um, how about on a more serious note? What about when, when things don't work out the way that you plan for them to work out? Relationships don't work out the way. Friendships don't work out the way that you want it. How do we respond to that? Are those things that we allow to break us? Or what about when the job that you prayed for, the thing that you've been hoping in for so long, you finally got it, and then they start going through layoffs, and you're one of the names that they call? How do you respond to that? Is that something that, that, that you allow to break you? You put all your time and your effort into, this, into these relationships or into this job, and then all of a sudden, it gets taken away. How do we respond? I want to let you guys know today that sometimes God will take things away from you that you hold above him just so that he can get all your attention, all your praise, and all your glory. See, our God is jealous for us, jealous for us, which means that if we put anything above him, he's going to be jealous. He wants our time. He wants our attention. He wants our effort. Our God is jealous for us. See, and he's jealous for our faith. And our faith, see, when we have our faith, our faith is what allows us to go through those hard times. When we, when we, when we lose our jobs, when we, when we face uh, obstacles of many kind, it's our faith that allows us to continue to fight. Um, Proverbs 3, uh, 5 and 6 says, To trust in the Lord with all your heart, to lean not on your own understanding, and in all your ways submit to him, and then he will make your path straight. The thing that I, I really love about the three Hebrew boys at the time was that they didn't care about what King Nebuchadnezzar did. They didn't care about the burning fire. 
They weren't concerned about anything that anybody thought of them. The only thing that they cared about was their faith in God. That's all they cared about was what God could do and what God is going to do. And God can save them from the impossible. How many guys know that we serve a God of the impossible? A God who can do impossible things. He can make impossible situations come true. It may not always look like the way that we want it to look like. may not always sound like the way we want it to sound. may not smell like the way we want it to smell. But guarantee you that God, what God has for us is going to be better than anything that we can muster up on our own. So don't compromise. Don't compromise your faith for those things. Allow your faith to be what carries you through and allow God to pull you through and walk you through those situations. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and keep going on with the, with the story. So King Nebuchadnezzar, after, after what they said to him, him being the narcissistic king that he was, he did not like that. He did not like saying, no matter what you do, we're not going to serve you. And so King Nebuchadnezzar ordered for the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than what it already was. And he had Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego tied up and thrown into the furnace. The furnace... It was so hot, y'all. It was so hot that the men who were carrying the boys to, to the furnace burned and died. That's, that's how hot it was. And looking at it now, it's kind of it's silly for him to even do that. He's killing your own men to make a point. And so uh, let's pick up at verse 24. King Nebuchadnezzar, so this is after the three Hebrew boys have been uh, put into the fire. King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement. And asked his advisors, weren't there three men that were tied up and thrown into the fire? They replied, certainly. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. This brings us to my second point. In the fire, God is with you. God is with you in your fire. God is with you in your problems. God is with you in your struggles. God is with you when you don't have anywhere else to go. God will always be with you. God's not going to send you through things by yourself. God's love is so strong for us that he, he will never leave us. He will never turn his back on us. He'll never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. He wants us to, to rely on him. He wants us to turn to him in the middle of our storms. But the thing is that we're the ones that always get it messed up. We have a, a very, very much have an I mentality. You guys, are you guys familiar with an I mentality? That I have to do everything. I have to do this and I have to do that. But in reality, that's not what our Christian life is about. It's about doing life with God and doing life with other believers. That's what, that's what, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Growing up, I always heard this, this phrase saying that um, God would never put you through more than you can handle. And I want y'all to know that that's not true because so many times God has put me personally through so many situations that I can't handle, that I can't handle at all. But he does that so that I have no choice but to rely on him. I have no choice but to turn to him in my weakness. I have no choice that when I break down, I finally have to go to him and say, God, I need your help. And we can't be afraid to go to God and say, hey, God, I need your help. And sometimes it is hard because we can't see him. Sometimes it's hard because we can't audibly hear him. But God works our situations out in mysterious ways, in ways that we will never understand. About uh, in March of, March of last year, um, my wife and I, um, we finally accepted the, the um the call that God has put on our lives to come down here and be a part of Church on a Mission. Um, when we first heard, man, we were excited. Like, yo, like, this is dope. God called us down to New Orleans. We're about to do some, some cool things. Church on a Mission. We're about to get lit. It's about to be fun. We're going to tell our friends, like, hey, y'all, guess what? God's about to use us to do some, do some amazing things down there. Y'all better watch out. Keep your eyes open. Don't blink because you might miss something. Like, yeah, we were hyped. Y'all don't even know, before y'all even knew about any of us coming down here, like, we were, we were hype on it. That before Pastor Ryan even knew we were coming. But uh, soon reality, reality kind of set in. It's like, okay, we, ain't, we don't have much money. We don't have no money. We ain't got no jobs. 
We don't have no family. We ain't even got a place to live. And reality just sunk in on us. We even had family members get upset with us because they didn't understand the whole reason of why we would leave our careers, leave everything that we've, that we've built and accomplished for something that we think God called us to do. And like, that sounds crazy to most people. You're gonna leave everything you built for nothing. And it's, and it's, tough, and it's tough sometimes just, to, just for people to really understand that. But regardless of that, we knew what God had spoken and we decided to go ahead and go along with it. We started, so March was there, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, still no job, still no house, still, still nothing, still nothing. And we're supposed to come down in January, and there's still absolutely nothing. First week of January goes by, still hunting, still looking, trying to do everything. Second week comes, and I remember one night before we went to bed, I told my wife, like, yo, like, maybe God's not really in this. Nothing, nothing has worked out. Nothing has come together. And maybe he's not in this. And just like, maybe we need to start searching to find something else and figure out what we're going to do. And then um, she's like, no, we know that God called us. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and fight through this and see what happens. And then I decided, it was like, yo, well, I'm going to stop looking for stuff. And God, I hope that you show up. You're going to show up. I'm going to just put my faith in you, God. And whenever, whenever you're ready, go ahead and show up. I kid y'all not, literally the next day, the very, very, very next day, Pastor Ryan called me. He's like, hey, man, we found a house that, you think, that we think you might like, and then that house didn't work out. But he kept looking. He went around that very next day and looked, and he found a spot. And I kid you not, that exact same day, we were able to put a down payment on the house that we currently are living in. And y'all, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you because, yeah, we got a house, but I'm telling you because that when we take control out of our hands and we put it in God's hands, that's when he begins to move. And that's when he begins to make things happen. But we get so, control, we, we get so consumed with keeping things so tight. Like, God, I can't, I can't let go of this. I can't lo- let go of that. But God wants us to give everything. God says to cast every burden upon him. Cast everything that we have, all of our cares upon him. In the moment that we do that, that's when he's going to make things happen. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's keep reading. So, King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, King, Nebuch- King Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shot it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, perfects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair on their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, praise be to God, praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who, is, who has sent his angels and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble. For no other god can save in this way. Come on, let's give God some praise for that. Let's give God some praise for that. My third point, faith brings praise to God. Your faith, our faith, it brings praise to God. Everything that we do, when we put our faith in God, it brings praise to him. All the three Hebrew boys did, they put their faith in God. He showed up. And because of what, he's, of what he did, it changed the whole perspective of an entire kingdom. It changed the whole perspective of the New Orleans area, I mean, of Babylon. It changed the perspective of everything around them. When we put our faith in God, it can change everything around us. 
It can change your life. It can change your community. It can affect your family. It can affect your city. It can affect your country. But it takes us being able to take that step and put in our faith in God and allowing him to do what he does. When we moved down here, all we knew was that God was going to do something. That's all we knew. All we knew was that he was going to do something great and that he wanted us to be a part of it. And y'all, I'm not going to lie. We still have issues. We still have problems. We still have struggles that we face all the time. Literally all the time. It's not easy. Living a, living a faith-filled life or being a Christian is not always easy. But we know that because of what God has already done in this situation, he's provided a home for us. He's provided a, house, a, a home. He provided jobs. And he continues to provide financially for us. We know that no matter what we are going through, no matter what else may come to us, we know that our God is going to bring us through. We know that he's always going to provide a way. We know that he's always going to make something out of nothing because he's already done it. Because he's already done it. And y'all, I'm telling you, our family is so full of faith right now because we know that our God is actually real and he's actually looking out for us. And he's doing the same for you. And he wants to do the same for you. But it takes us to put that faith in him. Let go of the control and allow God to do the work. Some of us, we're all, we're all dealing with so many different things in this place. We all come in with so many different heavy issues on us. Some things too big for us. Some things we don't know what to do or how to do or, or how to get around. But that's when we let go of the we and we take, we, we let go of the I and we replace it with God. We replace it with God. We put all of our trust and our faith in God. And I promise you, he's going to show up. I promise you, he's going to show up. Not once, not once has God ever failed. Not once has God ever failed when I called on him. Not once has he made, has he not made a way out of something that I had, that I, that I was lost in. You know, Pastor Ryan, last week, he cast a vision for us for three years that we're going to have our own building and that we're going to be running a thousand people regularly in attendance, in attendance. And, you know, all that, that vision, it starts with us. It starts with the people in here. See, our faith, our faith, when God uses it, it's contagious. It's contagious. The three Hebrew boys, because of their faith, they changed an entire nation. And we can do the same. But we have to allow God to be God in our lives. We have to allow God to walk with us through things. Because once he, once he does that and he begins to show his, his power, once he begins to show his glory, people are contagious and people are going to draw into it. People are going to draw into it and they're going to eat it up. But it takes us being the ones to start it. And you know, that was just three years. In five years, there's going to be more. In 10 years, there's going to be more. In 20 years, there's going to be more. We are just now getting started. We are just now getting started. And God still has so much to do through every single one of you guys. I'm looking at all these faces in here. All these faces in here. And all you guys have... You all have the power to change, to change your situation and the people around you. It's just a matter of just tapping into it. And you tap into it by allowing your faith to lead you. Stop trying to do stuff on your own. Stop trying to do it on your own. Let God fight your battles for you. Come on, can we stand to our feet? about you but I'm excited for these next few years we got a city to change we are church on a mission y'all we got a city to change we got a mission that's set out before us and we gonna do it we gonna do it don't let our don't let our pastor's vision not get in your heart let it go 
because we are about to change the city. And I know it because I don't feel like God would bring me down here unless it wasn't true. (laughs) So, today, if you're dealing with anything that's that's out of your control, we're going to take the next few moments just to reflect. Not to reflect. We're going to take the next few moments just to visualize what it would look like for us to let God handle it for us. What is it that we need to let go of? What is it and how we need to let go of it so that we can allow God to be God in our lives, so we can allow his power to move in us? We're going to go over this song one more time. Um, The lyrics are, faith rise up, O heart believe. Our faith is going to rise up in this place, but we have to accept it first. So let's take some time right now and let's just allow God to, to stir up in us. Rise up in me. Come on, church. The faith rise up. Oh, heart, believe. The faith rise up in me. Sing it, it out. doesn't matter how big or how small. Come on. The faith rise up. Oh, heart, believe. The faith rise up in me. worth this time don't think because it's a small issue that it's not worth this time because it is come on let's lift our voices in prayer father god we thank you so much for the fact that you will always come to our rescue when we need you god we pray that today god that you would just begin to stir up faith in us god that you would rise our faith in here god that we would stop trying to hold on to things and do things on our own but god that we will abandon everything that we want and everything that we know for you Don't let us, don't allow us to stress anymore over things that aren't worth stressing. Don't allow us to exhaust all of our energy on things that aren't aren't worth our energy. But God, let our faith and all of our efforts be in you. And God, let us see what you're going to do after that. And God, I pray that when you bring us through the things that we're going through, God, that you will get all the glory. And God, that you just begin to change the situations around us. You begin to change the people in love the people that are around us. God, we've got a mission to accomplish. And God, I pray that each of us take our own responsibility with it, God, and do our part. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen.